unconstitutional. That was right-wing billionaire and GOP mega-donor Harlan Crow's response to Senate Judiciary Democrats this week. In a letter from his lawyers, Crow refused to give the committee information about his relationship with Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Now, that bromance came under scrutiny last month after a series of bombshell reports by ProPublica, revealing Justice Thomas had allegedly taken and failed to disclose gifts, including luxury six-figure jet-setting trips around the world, all paid for by Harlan Crow's deep pockets. Now, for the first time, we're actually hearing from Harlan Crow himself. In a new interview with The Atlantic, Crow told my next guest, quote, I have never, nor would I ever, think about talking about matters that relate to the judiciary with Justice Clarence Thomas, adding that they, quote, talk about the kind of things friends talk about. Joining me now is Graham Wood, staff writer at The Atlantic, who interviewed Harlan Crow about his relationship with Justice Thomas. Graham, thank you so much for being here. I was fascinated by your piece. Um, and, you know, access to Harlan Crow is not being given liberally. It's not like he's sitting down to be able to talk to the media. So the fact that you got the chance to speak to him is really important. I wanted my viewers to start off by knowing, did Harlan Crow appear to you to be very forthcoming and very kind of open and transparent about the information he was providing to you? Yeah, he was mostly transparent. I mean, he thinks of Clarence Thomas as a friend, and so there are always going to be intimacies between friends that, that one doesn't want to talk about. But I asked him pretty directly about all of these things, and uh, he feels, rightly or wrongly, like he has nothing to hide. That said, he's clearly not willing to just tell anyone, including the United States Senate, exactly the, the relationship that they have. I was able to talk to him for hours about this and got a sense of what he and Clarence Thomas would talk about, what they would do together, what the nature of their relationship was, which was a friendship, certainly. But of course, a friendship with the Supreme Court Justice is not just any friendship. And so I, I think people are rightly considering that something that needs to be scrutinized. So, Graham, and, and that's exactly the point, right? Like, not all of us are going to be rolling around with a Supreme Court justice as, you know, our sidekick. But, you know, I'm, I'm a little troubled, though, that the official position then taken by Harlan Crow, through his lawyers, of course, is that Congress doesn't have the ability to ask him questions. But he's willing to sit down with you and talk for hours about the nature of the relationship that he has. Did it appear to you, though, that Harlan Crow? acknowledge that fundamentally that there had to be some level of discretion that's not being exercised here, that maybe there needed to be then also some more transparency that's not being exercised here? Yeah, he seemed to think that there was something different about being friends with the Supreme Court justice. He, you know, he's a real estate developer. He could talk to other people about real estate in a way that he couldn't talk to the about to Clarence Thomas about what 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 he does for a living. And so he did say there are certain things that we never talk about. We, we talk about things that old guys talk about. They grew up in the same era. They both grew up in the South. So they talk about they both like Motown, things like that. He said they would talk about. But when it came to matters pertaining to the judiciary, an absolute no-go zone. Um, so he understood there were some sensitivities. He just doesn't seem to understand that those sensitivities, in the eyes of everyone else, are going to be much, much greater than the ones that, that he perceives, because everybody else sees this as a relationship between a guy who has very hard right, conservative politics, and a Supreme Court justice. And when money is exchanged, exchanging hands, when goods and services are exchanging hands between two people who are politically engaged and who occupy positions of authority like that, people are going to wonder what's going on.